Good morning, everybody. Um, every year we are getting bigger and bigger in terms of the audiences who are actually coming to the conference. So thank you very much. It's a fantastic uh, to see everybody here. What a wonderful session to actually kickstart with, Suzanne. Thank you very much for that. And um, we have lots of other great speakers uh, you know, over the two days, so I hope you're going to enjoy it. Um, what I'm going to cover is actually, as you know, Every year we've been doing uh, two business performance surveys twice a year, every six months, and we've done one in, uh, in January, and we published these uh, results, and these are really becoming kind of the, the set of this benchmark in terms of uh, how uh, you're all performing out there, and what the challenges are, and most importantly, are there any opportunities, and unfortunately the challenges are actually becoming more and more and bigger and bigger, rather than the opportunities, and this time again, we did this in uh, uh, partnership with Nursery World, so uh, we are actually publishing the, the business performance survey today. Um, what I want to just really give you is the headlines, because actually uh, this is going to be on the website, and we've just done the press release, so there's been a lot of interest in terms of uh, what's actually happening. And I think the really the key issues are um, the chronic underfunding of the nursery education funding is actually mounting to be a serious, serious problem. And you know that how long I've been warning about this uh, for a number of years, actually, in terms of the, the changes and the difference. And I think the worrying thing is actually the two-year-old funding, the gap is actually now becoming a major issue. And this is exactly what I warned when the two-year-old funding was announced to support two-year-olds. We all know and we all absolutely wish those two-year-olds are the ones who actually deserve very high quality care, but actually the sums are not adding up. And if you look at the three hours, um, three and four-year-olds average loss, 62% uh, of the nurses actually said that they had a shortfall in funding, it's actually 700 pounds per child a year. In January, that was about 550 pounds per child a year. Um, and you can see how that is actually creeping up. And of course, the 12% or so decreases in the level of the employer funding, and 58% of them actually no change. You know, no change is not good enough, but decrease in terms of, uh, uh, you know, earliest funding is actually, is an absolutely recipe for disaster. What we heard this morning about how important early intervention and earliest child care and high quality care, how crucial it is, and there's no way absolutely providers can afford to deliver that for £3.45 um, average. And that hasn't changed, believe it or not, for a number of years now. And of course, the 41% of nurseries shortfall on two-year-olds, this is now creeping up. If you remember, at the stages of the pilot, you all said the funding that you received for the two-year-old was actually adequate. But actually, you can begin to see how the gaps are actually emerging in that. £678 per child per year. And even though the minister actually uh, asked all the local authorities that they should pass forward all the money to the front line, and actually the average is still £4.89 per hour. And of course, 68% of nurses saw reduced support for training from local authorities. And again, that has actually gone up because we know a number of local authorities are struggling. A lot of the earliest teams have been cut uh, quite drastically in some areas. So already, in terms of lack of support for nurseries from a training perspective, is actually uh, becoming an issue. And we've heard earlier on, I think, uh, beginning of the year, that actually cost of childcare has gone up 6.4%, and I think 4.8% for two-year-old funding, two-year-old uh, places. And so for now, we don't know where actually some of those figures are coming from, because actually, when I go around the country for member events, when I'm asking you how many of you actually put your price up in terms of cost of childcare, how many anywhere everybody's hand goes up, and if you look at it, on average, the fee increase has been 1.5%, which is well below inflation. And the shortfalls in funding actually are the ones which appear in the fee increase, as we all know. But actually, on top of that, the rising costs in terms of staff, you could these raise, and of course, from next month, you will all have to pay for the, uh, you know, uh, the, the checks and uh, DBS checks, which are now called, and you'll have to pay for those as well from July. So that is going to be an additional cost. And I think, you know, there is a, we're all concerned that parents are not able to afford 
uh, the cost of childcare. We know that because some of the parents are struggling. In fact, actually, grandparents plus uh, uh, who did a survey, their research actually showed the number of hours of childcare of people are using grandparents has gone up 35%. And, and we also heard from you that actually the sessional care is becoming more and more prevalent rather than actually uh, you know, people purchasing extra hours. And of course, most of them are only using 15 hours of free environment and of course now the two year olds. So that picture is actually, if that continues, we have serious issues that we need to really think about. And this is what we've been banging on with the minister, with the government, with all parties and all politicians. Because when we talk about how the cost of childcare is increasing, there are a number of underlying factors and the reasons for that increase, and these are the ones. And the fundamental issue is the free nursery education funding, and that is something that we really need to, to you know, keep on pushing because uh, I know that's a major, major issue for us moving forward. In terms of our recommendations, that you know, we have said this before, and uh, I was giving evidence at the uh, uh, Start uh, Children's Centre Select Committee. And Graeme Stewart, the chair of the select committee, uh, was actually asking me, uh, Panima, how can we make this kind of, you know, we, we're investing a lot of money in this country in terms of childcare, but actually we're not achieving the outcomes for children. Either that or we haven't got the evidence to prove it's actually making a big difference. And, and what can we do? And, and one of the things I actually said is actually the billions of pounds which the government is actually investing, number one priority for us is to make sure that reaches the front line. And I think it was Children and Young People Now who published uh, a research report with the Freedom of Information uh, from all local authorities. 48% of local authorities have been withholding funding um, for the previous year, but it was funding that's been allocated for early years. Now imagine if all the funding that is actually allocated to early years is spent on early years, we would not have some of these issues that we're facing. Now, I know in terms of ring fencing doesn't very, sit very well with the government policy, but you can't have both. You cannot have high quality childcare, highly qualified workforce, and actually make it cheaper for the parents as well at the same time. It is absolutely not an equation that is actually going to break even at the end of the day, and I think these are the messages we keep on giving it to the politicians. And workforce, and uh, that's the next priority. I mean, I know when we heard about, when I had a phone call from Nick Lang's office, I was actually speaking at a conference and my PA was frantically trying to get hold of me. There were about six uh, text messages, please ring urgently. And when I received the call, um, I was expecting it, uh, but obviously expecting it probably later on that week and not so soon. And the whole ratios debate has actually overtaken it, and quite rightly, because we all felt very strongly about that. But there are a number of other things in the more great childcare report, and uh, I think those are the issues in terms of workforce, in terms of quality, all these things that we need to be looking at now, now that debate is actually uh, put to one side. One of the things I just want to, to actually present today is we are launching our uh, previous strategic plan. We have just completed the, the current plan uh, at the end of March and I just want to share with you some of the, the highlights.
basically what I want to share with you is really the key achievements from the last three years. Um, I'm just looking at the, the kind of the, the details in the presentation. I've been with Engineer for 80 years now. And scary, I know. It doesn't seem like uh, that long ago. Um, but what is amazing is we have actually achieved 21% growth in membership last year alone. And no other membership organisation can boast that. We're actually top fifth in terms of the uh, membership associations internationally in terms of that growth. So thank you very much for believing in us because actually at the time of all these challenges and changes, it's absolutely crucial that we have that united voice for day nurseries. And one of the things I was doing actually is uh, to talk about when we were looking at the plan, the next year plan, the board and the trustees and the team and everybody were all looking at it in terms of actually what did we do well, where do we want to be and what do we want to do. And I actually consulted with a number of people and a lot of you who are actually in the room as well. Not only the trustees, policy committee members, uh, BFP partners, other partners, members, non-members, local authorities. Uh, because these are challenging times and lots of people, lots of organisations are having to reinvent themselves and expand their remits and rebrand, all these things are happening and we just wanted to really test the waters in terms of what people felt about MDNA. One strong message I got through from everybody was that MDNA is the strongest brand. You are what it says on the tin and that's what you need to keep hold of and absolutely focus on. And I have to tell you that actually, that actual day nursery's focus will be the primary focus for MDNA and it is now and it will continue to be and that's what I will strive to do in terms of supporting you as members. And because we wouldn't have seen that level of growth if people didn't believe in MDNA and also if people didn't believe actually we need that strong voice for the sector as well. So thank you very much for that. And then 94% of you actually said MDNA is the voice of the sector. And that's through the annual surveys that we do and to find out in terms of how you feel about it and what kind of services that we're offering to you and what are the things that you like about. One of the things that we've noticed, member events, because the membership has grown so much, at our member events now on average we are actually getting 100 providers attending every event. I think those of you who were at the Northwest event, we had 220 people who actually attended the member event. They're actually becoming like conferences in their own right. And all our partner organizations are really delighted that actually they're able to communicate with a number of providers in, in that kind of uh, you know, setting. So thank you very much for, for all that support. But most importantly, I think one of the things that we really focus on is the quality. And as you know, that MDNA is about promoting quality and earliest excellence. And uh, in terms of the Ofsted, we've been getting um, Ofsted inspectors to come to speak to, at our member events. And we were actually asking members in terms of their experiences uh, with the new inspection regime from uh, September. We had some very positive stories where they had a very good experience in terms of those inspections. And we also had some alarmingly negative stories in terms of those inspections. And as you know, um, I think Nursery World actually published an article, I think, a couple of weeks ago, in terms of some of those comments coming from providers. And I think one of the things that really is concerning me at the moment is the inspections that have been triggered by complaints. And I think that a lot of you know what I'm talking about. What is actually happening is now that they are full blown inspections, when the inspectors are coming in, actually doing a full inspection, the message they're giving to providers, well, it's whatever the grade it is, we're seeing two things happening. One, outstanding settings being downgraded to satisfactory. Um, the second thing, the decisions, what they were actually saying to the providers on the day, but when they go back, what the decision is actually coming out are two different things. And I think, you know, I mean, you've seen me um, sort of, you know, talking to Michael Wilshaw at the Breakfast News on BBC a couple of months ago, when he actually said quality is, uh, you know, is not good enough, quality is not increasing. And I challenged on that because actually, Austin's own figures show quality is on the improving. 81% of the nurseries are good are outstanding. So that is actually constantly improving. But I think one thing what I'm really concerned about is if a setting is actually breaching 
serious health and safety rules or serious uh, welfare requirements or child protection issues, absolutely we expect the regulator to take action and take action appropriately. But if those decisions are based on what I would call technical trivialities, I think the whole issue of actually bureaucracy and the government wanting to reduce bureaucracy is something that is actually not happening in terms of that. Now, I've just written to Sue Gregory, who's actually speaking tomorrow here, uh, asking for a meeting to actually highlight some of these issues because an officer decision can make or break a business. feel really passionate about is having worked in the SME sector for a number of years that when people tell me that Panima, I haven't been abroad on holiday for four years in case of inspection happening any time. If schools and head teachers are expected to be at the inspection, we would expect the nursery managers to be at the inspection when the inspector comes in. Now I have been asking for Ofsted to take the manager's annual leave into account for a couple of years now. I'm not going to let that go because I was told, actually, they're looking into it, and I was also told there is a mechanism for that to happen. So why aren't we using it? Because, you know, a setting, I mean, I was listening to um, uh, an interview at the NHT conference, and Michael Goh uh, was being challenged about Austin inspections, and uh, the, the uh, person who was talking to him said, head teachers and governors are being reduced to tears. And I thought, what about inexperienced young nursery assistants when actually Austin inspectors come in and challenge them and ask them some questions in terms of what about those people and I think it's absolutely we need that level playing field we had no notice inspection for a number of years and we have no problem with that we have always said that because we're absolutely uh, you know saying quality is at the, the utmost priority but what we need to really look at is actually the inconsistency of the inspection judgments and also the quality. If people are expected to deliver high quality, I would expect Ofsted to actually deliver high quality experiences through those inspections. And I think these things go hand in hand and that's something that we must really remember and, and push for. And I've no doubt Sue will be talking about this uh, you know, tomorrow when she comes. Um, and the other thing, of course, the clear message that came to me from, from all of you is Whenever I'm actually going up to, to member events and things like that, people talk about some of the challenges they're facing locally, but one thing I always see is that bubbly enthusiasm from people. And because changes have happened for so many years for the sector, and I think one of the things that when we're comparing ourselves with international uh, comparisons in terms of quality of childcare or what the situation is actually, in some of those countries, policy hasn't changed that drastically. Policy has been implemented quite slowly, whereas here, what we're in a situation is every month we don't know what's actually coming up in terms of changes in policy. And I think that's something that really, a lot of people say to me, Benima, please, can you tell the politicians to actually keep things as they are for a while until we actually understand them better, put them into practice and actually see the result of that. And we're really not giving time to some of those things to actually settle in to be able to do that fantastic work that you're all doing, uh, achieving high outcomes for all children. Um, one of the things I, I, I do in my job, which I absolutely love and enjoy, is not only going to member events, as you know, I uh, attend every event, but actually going to nurseries and seeing uh, you know, the real practice and seeing the children and seeing all of you really doing what you do best. And I've had the pleasure of going to a number of uh, nurseries, and please don't put a freedom of information in terms of how many nurseries I've, I've been to, because you will end up with a list. Yeah. And uh, so, one of the things I always feel passionate about is actually how important quality is for all of us, not just for people who live in high quality childcare. And uh, I have acquired a lot of nicknames over the years with NGNA, particularly with politicians. And those of, uh, people who can't uh, spell or pronounce my name will say that little Asian lady. Enough um, <laughs> of the little, thank you very much. And, uh, but one of the things I'm really proud of is actually behind me, there are a fantastic team of staff who are all here today. But most importantly, we have the capability, capacity, and the expertise and energy to deliver that vision. We have Sarah, Avery chairing, the trustees are all here, policy committees in all three countries, and fantastic network of chairs who are actually doing that local support. Um, and I was listening to a comment uh, on radio one day, 
and that Archbishop Desmond Tutu actually was given a peace award and the journalist was asking uh, him about how he felt about it and he said very quietly, um, those who stand out in a crowd are often carried by others on their shoulders. And I think you know, that really proves what a fantastic support that I have with my team on the trustees from that which is, and most importantly, from all of you. And Andy, I think the other thing is sometimes when we're making international comparisons, one thing that more great childcare has done is actually kept the channel tunnel traffic very busy. Yes. And uh, what I really feel very strongly about is we don't need to look too far for quality. Quality is here in this room up and down the country, in all three countries, are people like you doing fantastic work. And it's time we actually acknowledge it, support it, and celebrate it. Thank you very much.